the champ select here. No changes to come through as Janna and Azir hit the bench. We'll see whether anything does change up with the last four bands to come through. King having a consideration here on their next one. Lissandra going to be taken off the board very strong. And definitely in the hands of Flame here for LGD, but it's Acorn back in that top lane yet again. It's been a while since we've seen Lord Flame, and you did mention that he did do well potentially against Sky, having this sort of carry top laner off, but Rek'Sai going to hit the bench as well. We'll see who the last two bands to round this one out are going to be. Yeah, and LGD went away from their split point push mentality after they got engaged on in that mid lane, and we saw uh, MLXG fly across the river, the mid lane, and into a dra uh, raptor pit somewhere by yep. himself and solo out imp nearly with the help of Assassin. So I think that... Not playing Flame, playing Acorn, definitely more of a team fight oriented top laner. Flame would do very well in a split push here, but of course, not going to be able to see it. No, not going to be seeing it this time. Acorn back into that top side and now thinking very hard about what the last band to come through. Of course, Cassidan taken off by uh, King and Jarvan. They don't want to see the first pick J4. Yeah, so making sure that they don't get two of those. Uh, jungler preference. We've actually seen that MLXG can play something that isn't Lee Sin or Jarvan, so doesn't really have to tunnel on that one. Schwen, on the other hand, does struggle with other junglers, so they'll pick up the Lee Sin for him. And the Rumble pick up from Sky, interesting, because I didn't really, wasn't sold on it. He played a yeah. solid game. It didn't look terrific. It, I guess he dropped some good equalizers, also dropped a very poor equalizer in the top lane. So once again, it's a, it's a good pick away from Acorn. I can't, you can't undersell that, but... It's very interesting, and nah, Lee Sin, that's some good power picks. Yeah, that is some power picks, most definitely coming in here, and Acorn, such a strong player as well, going to have a field day on that nah, getting in amongst everything, but not going to happen here, as it's going to be the Thresh locked away, taking that one from Lamb. Yeah, I am much happier with this, a playmaking support for PYL, if they get a lane swap like that, can have a lot more roam potential coming out of, uh, I guess, the Thresh than what will be left available. Uh, I think that he had a good early game on uh, Leona, had also a really good uh, solo player in one of the team fights, but really wasn't able to impact as much as he would have liked. Yeah. Assassin, thinking about an AD carry pick here, did hover Callista for a little bit, but has gone back to a potential Sivir pick, and we'll see what MLXG wants to take into the jungle here, or whether he's going to pick something else up, and the Morgana is an option. Yeah, so double spell shields coming through for this bottom lane. We'll be able to deal with... a. Uh, whatever CC comes out for. Very risky lane, not much. Uh, there's a good catch potential out because of the upfront burst that comes out of Sivir, but not much apart from that. We'll be able to push very well, but definitely some Imps Caitlyn can come through, his Vayne can come through. I think yeah. that there are some definite counters to this Sivir, and I can't believe that they showed their hand on Nara, and now they're going to be able to be able to take it with the fourth round of picks. Yeah, exactly. And that's what happens when the top lane is locked in almost immediately. So Sky already taking that one away. You can't really put Nar in too many other places. You know, Mega Nar jungles pretty well. Like maybe <laughs> maybe that could be a thing, but not sure whether MLXG really wants to be doing that one. And they're listening to what we were talking about here as well, saying that last pick that AD carry, make sure that the Callista's not going into a comp that's going to be too much of a problem. And MLXG... Looking to pick up that Vi yet again. So it's an intelligent move by LGD because they can now choose something else. Yeah, something very safe will need to be played out of Imp here. There is a good team fight coming out. They have very good pick potential, actually, with Lee Sin, Thresh, Ari. That's a yeah. really scary three-man roaming squad. However, on the side of King, if you talk about picks, Vi, Zed, yeah. will be able to absolutely decimate whoever they want. They can solo out anyone in a team fight and pretty much wipe them off the map. And I would not be surprised if we saw this Caitlyn come through. Fantastic against Silver. Bullies her so much in lane, able to repetitively push back. I would be very surprised if we saw an Ezreal. It's going to be locked in, though. Wow. So Imp, Imp's gone to China, ladies and gentlemen. So he's going to be playing Ezreal. And is very slippery, but I know what you mean. Things could be a little bit dangerous here. So it's a very hard lane. Expect a lane swap to come through. I understand why he picked it, just because it is a response to AD Assassins, because you can go that blue build, even if you get Ninja Tabai and the Iceborne Gauntlet. We very rarely see the Ninja Tabai being picked up, but I think it's a very underrated item on uh, Blue Ezreal, because he just survives for so long. And having a tanky lineup with a lot of persistent damage through Acorns Nah, through Waylesses uh, Ari, they will be able to continue these fights and once again if they weather the storm out of the Vi and Zed ultimates yeah. they're in a fantastic position to win these team fights but last game they weren't able to do it
Yeah, and Imp again going to struggle just a little bit. The similar play style here with Ezra, just not able to jump around quite as often as a Callista does. And he is relatively short range as well. So might be a little bit dangerous, <laughs> even so. Yeah, has a much better item build though. Just yeah, it's okay. so much easier to come through. You get uh, the penetration you get uh, if you pick up the Blade of the Ruined King. So probably see Mirror Mana into Iceborne Gauntlet into Blade of the Ruined King and we'll just be able to sit back, poke, very low cooldown and be able to get his job done much easier than a Callista. Much more margin for error on an Ezreal pick. Yeah, okay. We'll see whether it is going to come through. Of course, the mid-game potential is still looking fantastic here on the side of King and Sky. We'll see whether he can have a better game on the Rumble, but let's get onto the Rift and get into game two. And here we are, game two between King and LGD. King on our blue side, LGD now on the red. And Acorn's Nah up against Sky's Rumble. Things could be terrifying for King if Acorn gets going. We saw him have a decent game on Aurelia, unable to really impact his team as much as he'd otherwise like, but still looking great. Yeah, certainly did. And we see a group of five LGD members moving into the bottom side of King's jungle. They understand that if they're going to win this game, they need to force. And maybe looking for that lane swap that we spoke about. Ezreal not terrific against Ziva, purely for the fact that he cannot push back at all. So they're looking to get some deep vision in. Will be spotted out by that ward. Yeah, they're going to walk straight past that one. Really intelligent warding coming through from Liam, I believe who managed to put that one down. King able to spot out a potential lane swap here as well, and they're going to back off after getting their own collection of wards around the jungle of LGD. Yeah, and look at the wards on the top side of the jungle. Two in the lanes to swap either way that the AD and support move, and then two in the actual jungle itself to be able to spot out Schwen's starting pass. So I like the way that they've started this one up. They must know that they're on the top side of the map because of how this has happened. So I'm very confused as to why Imp is moving anywhere near that side. Yeah, Imp might actually be, you know, doing a little bit of a fake out here. Of course, the base gates aren't there. It's actually King that are happy with the lane swap here. They've pulled their support into the bottom lane. So they're actually going to let the Ezreal dodge the Sivir. That is quite interesting. Do you think this is because they really want to keep Acorn down? They're giving him a lot of respect here in this matchup? Yeah, potentially giving Acorn the respect, but he's a ranged uh, in champion in mini NAR form. So if you send the support down with him, he's going to be able to see us completely fine. So that's just confused me completely as to why they would elect to let Imp on this Ezreal get through a weak early game. He's going to go that tier build. And yeah, that's just... It's blown my mind. It's, it, it does seem to have baffled you at least mildly here as Liam's going to collect a boomerang from Acorn, who's then going to continue on after Schwen was just a bit annoyed by some Dark Bindings flying towards him. And you can see that LGD weren't expecting it as well because Acorn went into his lane to try and CS because he thought he was going to be in a 1v1 and now is only just joined back up to his jungler to do some double jungling. So in the end, Imp actually having to push this lane because he wasn't able to get up there for a freeze, but... Siva going to push much quicker than Ezreal, going to be able to clear out these waves and do more damage to turrets. Yeah, do you think that's sort of what the tack that um, King are going to take into this one? Try to clear out these objectives, these structures as quickly as possible and possibly go for an early dragon play as they do have their duo in the bottom side of the map? Yeah, potentially that's what they're looking for. Look, don't get me wrong, they also have a pretty good support in Liam if they do want to roam and try and make something happen with that Dark Binding, but PYL can do that fine on uh, Fresh as well with the Death Sentence and Flay coming through. So, yeah, maybe looking to use this Vi. That might be the answer, actually. Vi, very good at early dives, has a shield, a lot of damage, and also has some fantastic early dragon control with that W. Yeah, Assassin able to farm up relatively effectively here in the mid lane, but oh my goodness, Whaler's taking a lot from those There's shurikens. four men strong in the bottom lane, actually forcing Acorn off the turret. They've completely zoned him from any CS, so... King looking to really get a move on here with four members strong. Imp in the meanwhile has got a very good CS going in the top lane. He's getting some levels behind his Ezreal. Teleport actually came in. They're going to fight for this. Yeah, Schwen actually going very deep. Beautiful use of all of his mobility to get back under that turret, back with his friends. And King, this is looking very reminiscent of what OMG did 
in response to Invictus Gaming. Yeah, it certainly is. And meanwhile, Imp, the beneficiary of all of this, has been completely unharassed, trying to get the lane to reverse, and it will now. He'll get a freeze in that top lane, and things could not be going better for LGD's AD carry. And is it actually going to be working out here, sort of focusing all of this farm onto an Ezreal? Yeah, it certainly will be. Ezreal has one of the best mid games if he can morph that, uh, if he can transform the Mura uh, Mana early. Uh, fantastic control will set up a lot of things for his Ari because of the slow coming through. So, yeah, definitely think it's worth the investment. Yep, Wish are now clearing out waves here on the bottom side. Acorn about to evolve. Sky's found his way up to the top lane as Imp has a level advantage. If we just expand on Ezreal a little bit more, Ezreal's problem has never been his power in the mid game. It's always been when it gets extremely late because Blue Ezreal doesn't pick up crit. So he's more of a control AD carry and doesn't have the raw power of something like a Caitlyn or a, even a Graves who can go for that Infinity Edge. He really is reliant on using his spells to, I guess, set up control around teamfights and facilitate his team. But he has a very cheap six item build and a lot of utility to get there, especially with some attack speed. So, yeah, it's never been that Ezreal is a bad mid-late game carry. It's just that when things get super late, six items, other ADs just outperform him through raw damage. Yeah, but as things stand here this game, Liam hanging around that mid lane here, letting Wushin have a free lane here, wanting to get that level advantage onto their Sivir. They want that on the hunt as early as possible. Sky has... A chance to get some levels up here as well, but Akon stretching that gold lead, that uh, CS advantage, even further in his favor. Now three times that of Sky. Yeah, and this is what happens when you, I uh, guess, allow your support to come down and hang out with a ranged a uh, AD top laner. We'll just be able to continue to CS here. He's triple the CS at this point, and in response, Sky actually even getting picked on a little bit from Schwen has to back away. Getting zoned out of the way here by Imp, who now has a two-level advantage, zoning Sky off these minions. The wave is, of course, pushing back towards King. Yeah, and Sky really needs to respect the burst damage that will come out of this level 6 Ezreal if he does nail all his abilities and get that increased attack speed up. So, fantastic play from him. He's got a 10 CS advantage for himself as well, and things looking much better for LGD in this early game. And looking at this mid lane as well, you can see that's a CS lead here for Wayless, utilizing that range to keep himself up and keep Assassin down, keep him harassed away from these minions and threaten him with that Orb of Deception. And it's looking very different here. It's no, no sort of solo kills coming through from Assassin on the Zed this time around. Yeah, we'll need to be a little bit careful on Zed is, of course, melee and does suffer from Ari early game. When he picks up that ult, does have a lot of kill potential, and he has done that now for... So wouldn't be surprised if he did try and get a little bit aggressive after he got a first shot in. If he can just pick up a Hex Drink, it will be completely fine in the lane. Wayless probably has to opt into an early arm guard. Yeah, Pewe are looking for a potential kill here, but Assassin's wise to it. He's going to spot that one out and going to be okay. As this guy clearing out his minions underneath the turret, but Imp is relentless. Yeah, certainly as just continuing to push and bully. 20 CS to 40 when you compare the top laners now, and Imp just continuing to do work, continue to farm up, and he's just using his abilities over and over again to continue to push Sky back. Yeah, that's actually an equalizer used on the wave here. The flash forward from Sky wants to land the harpoons, but gets a flash in response. Yeah, really good choice there from Sky. Recognized that Imp had actually just gone oom as in the Another mid lane. Another solo kill for Assassin, and we never seem to find it. This damage comes out from nowhere from this guy, and first blood this time. Yeah, able to grab first blood, equalizes the gold, so his team has been losing across the board in CS, but really nicely done there. MLXG actually getting caught out a little bit. Teleport coming through as well from Acorn. Yeah, Acorn coming through to the backside. He's going to boomerang MLXG here. He has a lot of rage built up. That hyper proc could potentially come in. There's another Vault Breaker to come down. Acorn doesn't have the Nah. He's level 5, so not going to get too much from that teleport. Just switching his lanes up. Yeah, in the end, actually wasting the teleport because now they have a Rumble whose ultimate will be off cooldown very soon. They can just walk towards that dragon, be able to pick that one up. Actually looks like very aggressive builds out of both mid laners here. 
Don't know why I'm so surprised. It looks like it will be the Cutlass into potentially a Brutalizer and just a Morellonomicon, not respecting the AD Assassin's burst potential at all is Wayless. Yep, not wanting to go for that Arm Guard. Just probably wants a lot of that cooldown reduction for that uh, spirit, spirit Rush so that he can get that off cooldown as quickly as possible. Of course, 20% is a lot in the hands of an Ari Piwail looking for another death sentence, but Living Shadow sort of works pretty well at escaping from basically anything. Yeah, it certainly does, and not really much pressure there. Interesting build coming out in the bottom lane. Imp has elected to go for an early Sheen with that tier. Doesn't really give out whether he'll be full blue Ezreal or whether he'll go that hybrid with the Trinity Force, but what it does mean is he has a lot of poke damage, so in 1v1 situations, we'll get a lot of work done. Looks like they might lose this turret very soon, however. Yeah, it does have a level advantage here on Wushin as well, who uses that spell shield to great effect. Imp going to be Mystic shotting him, and... I really liked that use of the spell shield. Sort of knew the Mystic Shot cooldown and used it when the cooldown was off. Yeah, it certainly did. And Imp tried to wait for it, but unable to in the end. That will be the turret actually not falling. They're keeping this one up, making sure that Imp can't freeze the lane any higher up. Teleport actually coming in behind. Caught out Schwen. Yeah, Schwen has been caught. Beautiful Dark Binding as well, but the Equalizer comes down. Imp picks up the kill here after a nice kick. Sky going to come in here now and get these Harpoons going, but... With that turret available, LGD able to find some safety. Boomerang touches Imp here as well. One auto attack on the turret. They take that one down. There is the death mark, and everyone's dying. A nice charm to come through. Wayless wants to make something happen, but it, as it stands, that is a one for three. Yeah, and that is why the teleport was so bad from Acorn. Won't mean the dragon, surprisingly enough, and they pick up a turret in response. So. Turrets go equal, three for one kills. Wow, Wayless not done. Yeah, he's coming through. Sky actually gets hit by the last tick of that Orb of Deception. And Wayless with some fancy footwork. Yeah, makes it two for three in the end. And that's good news for the mid laner because going against a 3-0-1-Z is probably terrifying for Wayless right now, especially with how well Assassin is playing. But across the board, a little bit more raw power for Wuxian in that little skirmish just meant that it went in King's favor. Yeah, but you have to think that Wayla's probably still going to be pretty terrified at this point. That's a 3-1, uh, 3-0-1 Assassin here on Zed. And when his name's Assassin as well, I mean, that just strikes fear into your heart anyway. It's like, oh, this is the type of character he even wants to play. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, it certainly does appear that way. LGD actually going for an early dragon here. That's good timing, so they'll be able to pick that one up for free. Dark right. Binding, not able to steal it away, so they able to pick that one up. Imp. Moving towards that Mana Mune, so looking to get that tier stacking even uh, more quickly. Is it about 130 uh, already? So he's making progress on it. That will be online for about maybe a 22-minute transformation if he's lucky, um, which isn't bad at all for an Ezreal. No, and he does have the ability to spam out a lot of these spells relatively quickly, and when he gets a Mana Mune, even the auto attack is going to be stacking up that one. He's going to be A-OK. -okay. Sky now has to be a little bit careful now that he doesn't have that outer turret as this wave is pushing pretty hard into that top side. Here well and Imp just going to take away the Gromp. Hanging out together. And Assassin Deathmark just back off cooldown. Has the Ignite there as well. He's going to blow it immediately. The Ignite to come down. Lovely charm as Wayless. He's going to survive. There's the dangerous game just for the insurance and four members of LGD. A little bit too much there for Assassin. Yeah, that was a really interesting play from Assassin because there was no one on the map whatsoever and he turret dove in Ari who still had a flash available as well as an ultimate. So in the end, it will mean that he gets taken out. Massive shutdown gold coming through and Imp able to pre pressure this turret. Do need to be careful although because Sky as well as MLXG lurking in the wings. Yeah, Dark, dark Binding not going to land. Zim's very slippery. MLXG finds his way around, dodges Mystic Shot by doing absolutely nothing. True Shot Barrage is going to clear out this wave here as well as Akon continues the split push. This guy has just been a menace inside lanes this whole series. Yeah, much better decision out here. Actually, they're, yeah, they're going to give him blue buff. Then I would expect to send Assassin Top to try and deal with Akon. He has picked up some Magic Resist. No armor as of yet. So until he goes back to shop, Assassin should be completely fine in this 1v1. And Zed deals with long lanes much better than what he does in mid lane in this mid game because it gives him a lot of time to be able to chase through, outplay with his shadows, and just get a lot of burst damage down. Yep, Akon did manage to make it back to base. Has teleport available yet again. Has also picked up a Warden's Mail. So what I just said about having armor completely nullified. Yep. 
That's what happens when you go to the shop. Sometimes. And you have about 1,050 gold. Assassin is going to be able to push this wave into the top side, though. Able to kill a few of them on the turret, but you have to think that Acorn's going to be back in time to save that one. Ooh, Lamb Wayless. looking for Whaler Sky, managing to land that one, but it's a beautiful charm onto him. Black Shield doing a lot of work, but there's the Spirit Watch. Sky's going to die. Could it be the double kill coming through here as Acorn? He really wants his kill. The flash, the boomerang. Picks up the kill. Yeah, Wayless outplaying two members there. I actually thought it was a fantastic Soul Shackles coming through, but then I remembered didn't have to burn his flash in the mid lane. Completely outplaying it. Picks up two kills for nothing and able to grab a bottom turret as well. LGD looking much more comfortable throughout this mid game. Yeah, and the thing that I really like about what LGD is doing here as well is the fact that they're bouncing back from a disappointing experience and Whaler's had a horrible time in lane, still keeping that mental fortitude up to know what he's capable of, knows what he can do in these fights and can play aggressively regardless of where he might be at mentally. Yeah, and they aren't done yet. Looking to, once again, grab a pick in this bottom lane. We mentioned the three-man roaming squad. Here it is in full effect. Yeah, PYL just going to come down here. There's a nice equalizer to zone them out. PYL taking a lot of damage, but Sky is so dead. Yeah, he certainly is. They're looking to corral now, and they will have to poke them off, but Kings still need to be careful. Yeah, Charm going to land on the lame here as well. Wushin trying to find his way down. Assassin's here as well. Orbit Deception doing so much damage as the Vault Breaker comes through as well. There's the Assault Battery on the POL. The heal to come through saves his life. Picks up the kill. Wushin dies as well. There's the Death Mark on the Wayless. Assassin flashing into the brush. Wayless, is he going to fall down? No, he's not. He's fine. Lamb's going to die to Imp here as well. True Shot Barrage doesn't find Assassin. But King, what is going on? Yeah, that is an overcommit in the chase. They were able to get so much poke damage out from Ezreal as well as the Ari that in the end it was complete suicide to keep chasing that way. Props to Assassin for turning it at all in their favor. Came up with some fancy moves and we'll take a look at it again. Uh, right here when NMLXG gets played out, that's just a really good heads up play from PYL. And Wuxian actually takes a lot too much damage, but this is really the tale of the mid laners because look at that double Shuriken that came through, able to uh, hit Schwen, really uh, persuades them not to chase any further. You have to think if he wasn't able to get that much damage down, could have been even worse, but a really heads up play from LGD, understanding their pick comp in this part of the game, able to use it to good effect, and Imps picked up that Iceborne Gauntlet. Yeah, and Wayless now with a DFG on top of everything else. That is going to be 30% cooldown reduction, and the ability to instantly pop anyone on the map. Yeah, and now we have a pick comp against maybe only a split pushing option coming through from King. They really only have one fed member. A lot of their gold is onto that mid laner, so he can potentially go into a lane, but with Aranju and Omen picked up from Nan, not even sure that he can get that kill at this point, and Imp is just so strong on this mid game, Ezreal. Yeah, Dark Binding gonna be dodged out of the way of it. There's actually the Destiny coming through from Assassin. Not going to find it. Imp almost falling down. The Ricochet forced to be flashed out of the way of his MLXG. Wants to find his way in. Assassin getting so much damage down. Flank coming through from Wayless. He has been spotted by a ward, however, so it looks like they will successfully disengage. That was pretty terrifying for Imp, but was able to use the flash to get out. Terrifying for Imp. Assassin went kilometers following that dark passage. He was on a mission there. Doing a lot of damage, but not dying either, so not too bad. Yeah, Dragon is back up, and looks like they've set up a little bit of a trap here. Looking to control that objective, the response out of King is to just push the mid lane. So unless they rotate down, they will get a free objective trade. Once again, early turrets are a very good thing, although they're actually being forced away from it. Yeah, actually, PYL is enough to convince King not to go anywhere near that one. They didn't have very much vision. They could have been collapsed on from that bottom side. Yeah, and very LGD good point. Decided to. And once again, King just letting vision control slip away at a very crucial part of the game. LGD, LGD doing a very good job of controlling that dragon objective throughout this series. That hasn't changed at all. And Acorn now, 130 CS to only 80, is really once again putting the screws in on Sky, who is not having a great series. And this is sort of a similar story to what happened in the last game. I mean, LGD, they were making fantastic rotations, managing to outplay King across the map, and then it got to a point where King got into that the sort of 5v5 team fights where they managed to turn it around, and we'll see whether it's going to happen the same way here. It's a similar comp. You know, Assassin in the mid lane, Rumble in the top lane, Vi's there as well. Siva, same champion, but 
similar the difference is the Thresh. Yeah, similar comp for them, although on the other side, there's a Ezreal that does much more AoE damage at this point in the game, much more upfront burst. And a Nah. Yeah. Who's just going to CC your whole team. Much harder as an Assassin to be able to jump onto an AD carry if you have to deal with that Wallop, if you have to deal with a Nah. And Imp now well on the way towards this blue build. Has the Iceborne Gauntlet, has the Man Immune as well. About to get that Transform coming through. You have to think that he's relatively close now. No, it's only halfway through, so a little bit longer before that one comes down, but just needs to keep auto attacking stuff. Yeah, he certainly does. Needs to get himself into a lane with a little bit of farm. Still probably about three, four minutes away, so not the early 22 minute that we'll see, but it will be still a very respectable time. Yeah, and you can see him just using his abilities with reckless abandon, wanting to stack this one as quickly well, as possible. he's got the blue buff. At this point in the game, Ezreal with blue buff is so terrifying, especially with how much CDR Wayless has in his build already with that Morellonomicon, with the DFG. I wouldn't be surprised if they actually just donated the blue buffs from now on over to Imp because he uses it extremely well. Oh, yeah. When that uh, those boots of lucidity are picked up, he's gonna have a lot. He, he's gonna be at forty percent with that blue buff, most definitely. Probably capping out just a little bit. Sky hanging around, actually waiting for someone to come into this lane, but not gonna be there. As oh, assassins found Acorn here on the bottom side. There's the descents to come down yet again. Nice dark passage. The teleport gonna be completely outplayed. Acorn takes no damage from that death mark. Starts getting slowed off. down. Ooh, Schwen might be in a bit of trouble. Gets Assault and Battery. There's the box down as well. A lot of ultimates being blown for about nothing on either side. Yeah, nothing at all coming from that. So, Wayless still looking for a little bit of a flank, but you have to think that's in LGD's favor. The ultimates that came out, the Deathmark, the uh, Assault and Battery, and the Equalizer are really the recipe of how King will win any team fights until they come back up. Not really much opportunity for them to do that. Yeah, and it was only the box in response. And there's a lot of sort of low cooldown ultimates here as well. Nah comes back up relatively quickly. That Dragon Rage also very similar. And Akon just split pushing. Surprise. Yeah, just a very, very conservative game. Once again, coming out of LGD, understanding that they're in control. I would have thought that they would have tried to roam a little bit further with this pick comp, but they're just able to take some uh, objectives and turrets for themselves and just through how strong they are at this point. Yeah, Akon actually wanting to get in amongst it here. Black Shield not going to get CC'd up too much. Assassin gets gnawed out of that fight. Dark binding onto a minion here as well. MLXG doesn't have the Assault and Battery just like yet. We have to remember that as Akon transforming back. The On The Hunt has been popped. Flash out of the way. Goes back, picks up the um, Dark Passage. No, it doesn't even need to do that as MLXG. He's just going to get smacked out of this fight. He's going to survive. The Death Mark to come through in yet again. Sky. Picks up the kill here as Assassin takes down Akon. The tower in the top lane, though, Wayless is split pushing here as Imp. He gets tagged by that one, but oh my goodness, PYL is so good. But Wushin comes in with the flash into the boomerang. Flash to follow, and PYL, he's going to be able to escape this one. Yeah, three or three for nothing, I think, in the end, actually coming through, and a little bit of an overcommitment twice. The jumping in from Imp was just not a great thing. You never want to E aggressively when a, a Rumble is around. He just does so much damage. And now Wayless in some trouble. Yeah, actually the charm landing onto Assassin here. There's the DFG and Wayless just gets eliminated. Yeah, completely misplayed one more time from LGD. They're just not respecting the damage that will come out of these King plays. May even have just given up a Baron there. And this could be another turnaround for King. The same situation that happened last game. A successful fight and then turning it around with a 2,000 gold deficit and down on turrets. It's exactly the same story. Yeah, it looks like Wushin trying to bait Schwen into his team, but no Baron going to come from that. Thought with the Blade of the Ruin King on Zed as well as the damage that will come through from Vi. They might have a look at it, but no, playing this one a little bit more conservatively, but they're still behind. But when you win team fights like that, it plays on your opponent's mind. Of course, they can't see the exact gold, and it's really only between this Ra Nar and Rumble at this point. Yeah, and that's the massive CS deficit yet again. I mean, Akon has been showing his prowess in this top side. Lots of wards here that Akon's 
going to be walking through. Not enough to really sweep this one out as LGD now looking to get even more Dragon control. And is this the one that King really has to contest? Or can they just let Dragons go like they did in the last series? Yeah, I still think they can let another Dragon go. I think that it's nice to be able to contest this one, particularly with the Rumble. But there's still no time on this game. We've mentioned that both teams looking for that one pick to get it started. One with the Z, the other one with the REZ in a much better position to be able to do it at this point in the game. So they will be looking to see if they can get something, but they don't really care if this one goes over to LGD. Yep, MLXG does manage to get a ward down here into this Dragon Pit. He is in for a potential steal. Oh, that's actually going to be the charm landing on a lamb. He is definitely dead. Death, Deathmark going to land on a Wayless, but not going to kill him here as the teleport gets cancelled and the dragon gets picked up. So LGD managed to get a kill and a dragon. Yeah, so that's very good play coming through from LGD, managing to pick that objective up in their advantage. More importantly, getting the kill on the support player as well before it, the fight even started. Means that nothing will come of this push coming out of King. Also baited out the ult from Assassin. So for a brief window, it feels a little bit safer. Uh, has picked up that last Whisper as well. So doing a lot of damage on this Ezreal. And is there room in him's build as well to pick up that QSS? Is it going to be very important for him to get rid of this uh, Deathmark? Or is that going to be onto Wayless almost every single time? Yeah, no, I think that Wayless at this point is a higher threat, so it will be onto him majority of the time. But I think, yeah, definitely room for a QSS in the build. Builds into a nice material similar to late game, so doesn't hinder the build damage-wise. And after this, really only needs a lifesteal item as Acorn. <laughs> Has some visitors, nothing much going to happen. Yeah, MLXG did manage to take away that big Krug, though, so that is a big deal. Krug advantage now in favor of King, stretching their lead to the Krugs quite a lot. Red buff now going to be taken by Wushin. And Assassin going to be taking out the Raptors here as well. Liam trying to get some vision down, but might have a few friends there near the Baron pit. I miss the 10 soft resets on jungle camps. <laughs> Being able to take that way one way is Wushin, so... He's in a good position at the moment. Has picked up his last burst spear as well. So turning into more of that archer sivir, being able to just throw the abilities out for a lot of damage. Hasn't actually gone for any of the additional crit or attack speed out of a Phantom Dancer or a Static Shiv at this point in the game. Will mean that his upfront burst is a little bit less. As now LGD are the ones trying to reassert control over Vision. And that's my one criticism of King this series. They really haven't done a good job of solidifying control over any area. Yeah, on the hunt's being popped here, and that's going to be... Oh, actually, PYL getting eliminated. Wushin picks up that kill. The fuck Spirit spirit Rush, sorry, is going to be used by Wayless to get him out of that one, and King get the pick that they want and transition into this inner turret. Yeah, and really good force one more time from MLXG, using this fight to just force through. Oh, Assassin. Assassin in trouble. Imp actually gets death marked here, but Assassin's so incredibly low. He's not going to die. The charm not going to land either. True Shot Barrage comes through, but he's going to be okay. There's a Sonic Wave resonating strike, and Assassin falls down. Traded instantly for Schwen, though. Yeah, fantastic kick there coming through, but not enough still for uh, LGD to get a favorable team fight. They lose one, they trade two back. So King's still coming out ahead, but LGD positional advantage, rushing down this mid lane, trying to get anything for their trouble. Yep, MLXG, he's going to head back to base as well as Sky. They are going to be able to do some work here as Lamb's found his way out the side. Not going to find the Dark Binding, but I don't think he really could have done much with that one. Not a lot of ability power on this Morgana at this stage. Beautiful spell shield by Wushin. Going to stop the abilities from doing too much damage. Yeah, so really good vision control now on the approach to Baron for King, but still nothing in the Baron area. So as soon as LGD run past that, they're going to once again be blind on the map. And they're really trusting in MLXG's Vi to be able to fly across and Assassin to be able to delete someone. I'm waiting for the time that that combo doesn't work out. Surprise we haven't seen the uh, QSS come through or the uh, Zonya's Hourglass as of yet because they're just going to block a lot of key targets and really PYL becomes the only member Assassin can get rid of on the map. Yeah, that's true. And as you mentioned it, Zonya's Hourglass gets completed here by Wayless. So not going to be the target that Assassin really wants. Can negate a lot of that pop damage to come through at the end of the death mark. And Imp now sort of the only one left as far as that damage threat to be death marked in these fights. A lot of vision now going down for LGD. Look at these pink wards around that Baron. They know that that's where King wants to be focusing their efforts. Sky hanging out in this bottom side of the map, trying to push that one through. Acorn about to answer both of these top laners with their teleports available. Can 
Again, amongst these fights, very, very well. Have a look at Acorn's Rage as he enters these fights as well. We'll see whether he can control that as he's been wont to do. He's been fantastic at getting in with exactly the right amount so that he can affect the team fights with that Mega Nar from the word go. Yeah, he's actually only 1-1-1 one, one, one so far, Acorn, so he really hasn't had a huge team fight presence as you would most likely want to see from this Nar. Looks like they're just content to send the Rumble back to base. Actually, he's joined up with his team in the mid lane, so King looking to group earlier. Acorn, as we speak, has actually transformed, so that's 18 seconds away, and they're looking for a pick. Ooh, Charm not going to land. Neither does the Orb of Deception here as well. It's a nice black shield onto MLXG. This Morgana pick doing wonders for King so far. Not going to use too much or LGD, but they give away their positioning, and five pink wards around that Baron. Uh, four. Four pink wards around the Baron. Yeah, and they're all going to be cleared out because, once again, Acorn isn't with his team. He's kind of stuck halfway between split pushing and looking for a teleport at the moment. Doesn't really want to move up. So King able to rest control of vision back in their favor. LGD still looking for a put, uh, pick, but not really much coming because of good grouping. Yep, and MLXG, he's going to find this pink ward eventually. Imp wants to get him off that one. Mystic Shock going to go wide. He's going to Vault Breaker his way through here. LGD are collapsing, potentially, on the jungler. Assassin takes a lot of damage here as well. And there's the explosion on the lane. They're getting rid of the support. It's a lovely equalizer to come down. PYL stuck in that one, as is Schwen. And Sky coming through. Wayless forced to use that Zonyas. That's going to mean MLXG picks up that kill. Acorn dies as well. The double now coming through as Schwen. He's forced to back out and King should never discount their incredible team fight ability. Yeah, you certainly shouldn't. That was an ugly team fight coming out of LGD. Completely fit, split. Wayless trying to come through and looks like this will mean another Baron for King who towards this like 25 to 30 minute mark, look to have LGD's number at the moment. Yeah, they want to make us think that LGD is in contr complete control of a game and then King say, oh, no, 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 guys, we're just kidding. This is, this is when the game turns around. This is the game when the game belongs to us. And another Baron, more Baron control now picked up for King. The Dragon has spawned. LGD, they want to go straight there. Of course, Baron not giving you too many sort of combat statistics now. So both teams still very, very even. Only 1,000 gold is the lead. Wushin going to be picking up this red buff if he can. So we'll see whether... 1,000 gold the lead. That's horrible mathematics coming through. And it looks like they will be able to Did maybe 20, pick 20,000 gold. That's ridiculous. Ooh, the dragon has actually been started by LGD, but MLXG's in here, does manage to pick up the first dragon for King, and those 6% extra stats meaning a lot here at 32 minutes into the game. And they are able to get out of here scot-free as well. Yeah, so maybe a good thing that uh, they didn't fight there because they really weren't in a position to, I guess, capitalize on the poor positioning of LGD. I think a lot of this comes down to the equalizer. You nailed it last team fight that there was just a great equalizer that came out of Sky and really split the team up. They weren't able to get onto the carries very well. Um, Imp farming out this bottom lane. He's starting to peak now as Ezreal. Nearly grabbed that Blade of the Ruin King and no one can really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Assassin. He's picked up another BF Sword. Looks like he's going towards that Bloodthirster. I love the build. A lot of damage onto those auto attacks now as well as the uh, abilities, and they're looking to pick up their second out of turret. Yeah, Wishin actually tanking that one up for quite some time. Dark Binding going to land on a PYL. This inner turret is not long for this world. There's the Equalizer to come through as well. Assault and Battery so deep under Wayless, but he's on you, is it? Beautiful play, Assassin, all the way out the backside. Imp is going to die to the death mark proc as Akon gets taken down low. LGD, they are going to have to back away from this one as only one member dead for one, but so much high health bars on King. Yeah, one for one. King actually have to back away because of the home guard threat that will come through for the re-engage. So King will be happy with that little bit of an exchange. They were able to go extremely deep and burn pretty much all of the summoner spells on LGD's lineup, meaning that the next team fight will be even easier because Wuxian hasn't had to use anything, was free to just sit back, throw out the boomerang again, and Assassin is playing out of his mind. We take a look at the dead Ezreal. He went all the way through everyone at the back of that team fight and still managed to pick up the kill with the last Shuriken. Yeah, that was beautifully played. 
And, you know, that death mark giving him a lot of safety as well, but you still have to hit all of those abilities in order to make sure that that target is dead. And that was probably through a face of the mountain coming through from PYL at the same time. That is a lot of extra health that you need to burst through. Yeah, it certainly is. And he burnt the flash to chase the Ezreal around. In the end, just a very good outplay of two very mobile carries. And Assassin seems to have Imp's number at this point. He does, and now has a Bloodthirster as well. So double lifesteal items. He is going to be doing so much flat damage. It is terrifying. Do you, what do you think the sort of the final item, the, the item to round out Assassin's build is? Does he need a Guardian Angel here, something like that? Or is it the Ban Banshee's Veil option? Yeah, I think the GA is a really good pickup here just because they have a lot of consistent damage that will come out of the Rumble and Fire. They're not dying at this point, so GA is always one of those good items. They also look like they're only one team fight away from a one map again as well, and GA probably is that best if you just want to win a map item. Um, however, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a Banshee's Veil. We'll be able to block out that charm and is very important because a lot of the gold is on Assassin at this point that he doesn't get picked off. Yeah, he's getting boomerangs thrown at him as well. Akon being very annoying. About to transform. Has Nara available here as well. Thorn Mail has been built up by this Nara at the same time. It looks to me like it's going to be very difficult to kill this Nara at this stage. Yeah, they're just waiting for him to evolve. I wouldn't be surprised if they took the fight here. Baron has run out, so they're going to have a hard time sieging this. Might actually have to move away. That's a problem with Civicomps. Very good at diving, very good at getting in uh, position to maneuver around. Horrible at siege. Yeah, oh, death sentence. We go a little bit wide here as Sky finds a ward. I don't know whether he really wants to be too far up on it, but that black shield going to stop any charms from coming in as actually Assassin gets caught here. The death mark needs to be used. He gets immediately exhausted. They're chasing him down. He's not dead somehow. Wayless going to pop that Zonyas and then Spirit Rush back in, but he's going to die. The Assault and Battery onto him. He's dead as well. A triple kill already for Wushin. That is actually going to be MLX shaping up the kill. A quadra now for Wushin as the Penta stolen from MLXG. Yeah, really well done there by Wushin. He I guess sat at the back, waited for all the damage to be dumped onto Assassin and then went in there and cleaned up the fight. In the end, MLXG Sky, way too tanky. They're looking to break into the base. There's a minion wave behind it. Wouldn't be surprised if they try and replicate their game one feet and maybe close it out. No, I think it's too short a cooldown still. Yeah, still the death time is quite low. 36 minutes into this game, they'll be happy with an inhibitor here. As King going to head back to base, maybe prepare for the next Baron that is going to be up in a minute and a half. But Assassin got caught by a death sentence and exhausted and still managed to put a lot of damage down to PYL and make it out and bait Wayless into that fight. Assassin is just doing exactly what he needs to, even when he gets caught by Skillshot. Yeah, able to, I guess, aggressively death sentence in, made the team back off and then just went back to his shadow, was able to really outplay a lot of that exhaust duration. And yeah, you mentioned it, baited in uh, Wayless, who had to pop his Zonyas, wasn't able to get out of the team fight. And in the end, everything just going King's way this time around. Yeah, and this time decides that he doesn't want to get exhausted, doesn't want to get death sentenced going to pick up a QSS, so going for that Mercurial Scimitar as well, and he's going to have so much AD by the late game. Yeah, he certainly is, and obviously that W just does so well being able to scale up, so I think that it's very underrated Zed's passive in the late game, that's why auto attack builds are very good on him, because he's able to get a lot of damage down once people are below 50% health, really augments that damage with the death mark as well, um, so looking to scale up into this late game tank, and for me, MLXG... 2-2-10 again has once again gone that Warmogs build, has just become such a nuisance on this Vi. It's so hard to escape the lockdown that comes through and Imp not able to perform how he would like in these team fights. And Wayless, after having a great mid game picking up those kills, just has done nothing in the late game. Been unable to really contribute much at all, being sort of Zonya's in at interesting times and then dying a lot of these fights as well, which is not working out. I love this Aegis of the Legion pickup here by MLXG. Understands the fact that Ezreal's going to be doing a lot of magic damage. Of course, Ari is a factor, and that Foxfire can be hitting so many different targets at once and helping King survive through these fights with that Locket of the Iron Solari shield to come through very soon. He's going to be very important. Yeah, and look at the wave control coming out of King now. All three waves pushing into the base. That top wave has to be dealt with. The bottom wave has to be dealt with. And this will just mean that they have complete control over this Baron area. Would not be surprised if they started up. In fact, I think Assassin wanted to. He got very, very antsy there. 
has popped that uh, Ghost Blade as True Shot Barrage going to come through, start off the Baron for them, make that decision. And Assassin, he takes that as, let's start the Baron, guys. Let's do some killing. That top wave is huge. That will take down the turret if it is not dealt with. So look for Akon to maybe rotate over there. All the pings have gone down furiously from King. They know exactly what's happening. And oh, this is such patient play. They're waiting for someone to go back and deal with that wave and then immediately start off the Baron. Um, Schwen has come back around. Sonic Wave's going to find the target here in King. They're waiting. Dark Binding lands on a PYL. Schwen takes so much. There's the death mark. Equalizer just to zone them out. And Schwen easily picks that one up. Yeah, fantastic play coming out of King overall. Really understanding that LGD had no good decision left. Do they give up the Baron or do they give up their base? They choose for the Baron and King just might take the base in response. But that is two key cooldowns that are not available for the next fight if they fight very soon. Sky's Equalizer going to be very important, as well as that Death Mark. Assault and Battery still there, as is on the hunt. Both very, very important. Fruit Shop Barrage going to come through. Just does a bit of damage to Wushin here. Gets rid of that Bloodthirster shield, but this tower went down so low from that huge minion wave that it's down already. Yeah, so don't even need the ultimates to come through to force them off. LDG, LGD need to fight right now. Otherwise, they're probably going to be strangled out of the game. Yeah, and that bottom wave of super minions heading in as well is going to demand the attention of LGD. And MLXG, look at how tanky he is at the same time. Death, mark, um, Death Sentence, sorry, not going to find its mark. That's a very confusing sentence considering the names of the abilities in this game, but everything on a knife edge now. And LGD almost, as you mentioned, just getting forced into impossible decisions now. King with a stranglehold. Yeah, well, ultimates are back up, so LGD's window has completely closed. This inhibitor will probably go down because... The, in the bottom lane, super minions are on the turret. They're just waiting for Acorn to, I guess, go. Maybe going in now. Yep, Wallop not going to land on MLXG. It's a nice reaction with that black shield in case that had have landed. Darkbinding going to land on Acorn here as well. He's just transformed back into Minina. This could be the go button for King. This is when they want to engage these fights. There's the equalizer to come through, zoning off the inhibitor. They're going to easily take that one. And LGD, they had no ability to fight that one. Yeah, nothing they can do at all. They're looking to catch them in transit again. Unfortunately, Acorn still in Minina. We'll just look to push the last uh, inhibitor turret of the game. Finish this one out nice and slow, actually backing away. Think they've accomplished enough. Two inhibitors down. We'll go back shop. They must have so much money in their back pocket. Yeah, about 3,000 on their AD carry. So they'll be able to finish up some item builds, come through and finish it off. Yeah, probably going to finish off an elixir there as well. Able to spend most of that money. And Wushin has just had a fantastic game. Now at max items 6, 1, and 12 on this Sivir. And we've been seeing Sivers have mixed results just recently, but he's 90 CS in the lead, just destroying him as far as how far he is ahead in this game. Yeah, and now that the crit and the final build has come through, this is where, uh, I guess, Imp's Ezreal falls away rather rapidly. Not having any of that critical strike. Great control AD carry, as we mentioned, but against a six-item Sivir, he's just going to be lacking a lot of damage because of that crit and the auto attacks that come through. So... LGD just not able to use their mid-game spike the way they want to and looks like King trying to run over the top of them. Yep, and oh my goodness, the banner of command to come in from Liam as well. The super creep to start the siege and that's what they need. They've got barely any siege now in their hands but the fight is on here as well. Imp gets death mark. That's actually going to be the ultimate coming through from MLXG at the same time but Assassin's dead straight out the gate. MLXG so incredibly low. True Shot Barrage not going to find its mark and MLXG finally dies. The equalizer. Imp's going to die to Sky and Sky is tearing through the back line of LGD. The charm lands. He finally falls. Only Wushin and Liam alive as the house Falls on top of Wushin here at the same time. A decent comeback fight here for LGD, but they're still going to lose the inhibitor turret. Yeah, probably going to lose an inhibitor off it as well. They need to be careful here, Wushin and Liam, because there still are three members, and the teleport is coming in behind them. Coming in behind, Akon wanting to make something happen, doesn't have any rage. Is going to be able to stop the retreat, though, as they head out of this base. Schwen's over the wall as well. Wushin does have the flash. The flash over. He doesn't. He flashes back again. This is ridiculous. Akon now going for one for one. Liam tries to kill Schwen, but I don't know whether he'll be able to. Oh, my goodness. The Black Shield, not going to be enough for the physical damage. And Wushin's going to fall down as well. What is going on this game? Yeah, the start of that fight all started with Schwen landing a great flank kick to 
boot Assassin into his team. He had no choice to once again offensively Deathmark. This time it was onto Imp, and Imp just dealt with him with a full shield off the Bloodthirster. So a great fight coming out of LGD, managing to grab an ace for only two members. That stopped a little bit of the bleeding and maybe completed a few more core components in items, but still maybe a little too li little, too little too late. Little too little too late indeed. Ridiculous sentence, and I liked it a lot. Imp now going to be able to take away this red buff. Dragon has just respawned. That is going to go over to King most definitely, but LGD in no danger of getting that sort of five dragon mark coming through from King. Of course, only picking up their third now, evening out those dragons, both of them having that movement speed and tower damage. Yeah, and a lot of pressure now on Acorn. He's up nearly double CS at this point is that six item Nah coming through as well. So if he can get a team fight started, I honestly think if LGD start, start the team fights, they're in a much better position. We've seen too much reactive play coming out of them. They need to look for the flank, need to look for the kick and get Acorn in the middle of the fight to start creating havoc because he is an absolute monster. He looks like he's going for even more armor, potentially a GA coming out. And he's just, yeah, and Beast. Look how tanky he is in mini Nah form, let alone when the Evolve comes through. Yeah, and we'll see whether his rage control is really going to work out. King has been starting these fights knowing exactly where Acorn is, and if he gets the flank, and like you said, they start the fights where they want to, things are going to be very, very different. The last inhibitor now is being sieged up on, and Assassin, he's finished the Guardian Angel here as well. He sold that QSS and picked up that one last life, and this might be exactly what you're talking about. They only need to win one more fight, so let's use that GA. Yeah, and I'm surprised there isn't actually another one coming through for Wuxian as well. Maybe valuing the shield to get rid of a charm a little bit higher. But on the other side, QSS out uh, for him. The Zonya's Hourglass has been finished for a while. About 350 armor on Acorn. So very few targets coming through for good death marks at this point in the game. Yeah, but this inhibitor is getting Siege down upon Assassin. Takes a lot of damage. There's a locket of the Iron Slurry to come through. MLXG, he gets charmed up here at the same time. The inhibitor does fall down, but they trade it for MLXG, and the fight is on. Flame is right in amongst this fight. That Equalizer was in a decent position, but not really getting anyone as far as damage is concerned. Imp just going to use that QSS. Oh, it doesn't even need to, as Sky is going to get destroyed. The Guardian Angel pops, but no one is dead on LGD. They lose all of their inhibitors bar that top one that just respawned, but they're all alive. Yeah, and Imp playing out of his mind. A really good charm actually starting that one up to get MLXG caught out of position, but this is a late game, Nara, and nothing is going to stop him. Unfortunately, Assassin's starting to fall away with his build. Too many defensive items coming through. Can't get the job done. This might even mean a Baron for LGD, and they've stalled this game out to the point where gold no longer matters. Everyone's finished their item builds, and they're right back in the game. Yep, and no vision around here either. All the members still dead on the side of King Wushin. There is nothing he can do. LGD get an easy Baron off this one, and that is going to help them so much in repelling these super creeps heading into the base. Yeah, it certainly will. It means that they are able to send the really powered up minions against the super creeps. In fact, the Barroned up minions win out in the 1v1, so they can just push down lanes. I didn't understand that matchup. I liked it. The more you know. The more you know. Banner of Command was actually sold now from Lamb. He has picked up that Righteous Glory to continue his ability to start these fights. The Mikhail's Crucible available as well. Can stop a Charm from coming in or a Death Sentence if it does manage to land. But you're right about Assassin. He just, he's running out of targets. The Guardian Angel finished by Acorn. This is almost an unkillable Nah at this stage. And he went from 2-2-2 two, two, two now to... 4, 3, and 10 relatively quickly in this game. Yeah, he certainly did. He's been involved in a lot of the end game team fights, and that's exactly where you want your Nah to be. He's an absolute monster at this point in the game. 340 armor, 170 MR, and all of that health coming through. He's going to be able to withstand so much punishment. Yeah, and that health will only going to get increased by that Mega Nar form as well. So now sitting on about 4,000, it's going to be more than that. Yeah, it certainly is. So pressure now on King. They had the window. They couldn't close the game out. They breached the base and got rid of all the inhibs. Didn't try and push their life. Played this one slow. And it's really come back to bite them, you have to say, because Rumble not doing as much as Nar in these late game fights. Wayless 
maybe even starting to outperform Assassin. Well, exactly, especially as far as relevance is concerned, because that death mark going to mean nothing on the carries that Assassin wants to be fighting here. Schwen takes half his health from somewhere. He's going to head back to base, though, and when King is forced to fight in these open areas as well, it makes Rumble a whole lot less impactful. So as soon as LGD, they get on the front foot and start moving through their jungle, it might be the opportunity for King to get the team fight that they want and get that equalizer working for them in a way that actually does all of the damage over time that it is capable of. Yeah, and that's what they need. They need a really good equalizer because look at the armor coming out on anyone else. A couple of great team fights from Assassin and Wushin. They're going to definitely do damage, but a couple of Thorn Mails coming out now from LGD, and they're just going to, I guess, mitigate a lot of the damage with their uh, heavy frontline team. Schwen actually looking to get in there and, I guess, force a fight with a kick as well, and it looks like both teams happy to wait for the inhibitors respawn. Still both teams, I think, two dragons away from having that fifth one, so not yep. much really to fight for here. I wouldn't be surprised if LGD just... Ooh. Oh, Schwen's being discovered. There's the Assault and Battery on Akon here. He bounces over the wall, but look at that. He, he was being wailed on for quite some time. Nothing happened. Yeah, looks like they're now in a good position to be able to contest this dragon, however, because they've got complete vision and they need to face check. Schwen in response, looking for the flank. Look at him go the long way around. This is how late game Lee Sin should be played. He's got one impactful ability and he's looking to use it. Might have been caught out. He has been caught out just a little bit. Going to pop that Banshee's Bell. Descent's landing on a sky here as well as the Black Shield going to come through in response. LGD doing They're a lot of, of damage to this dragon. But look, the inhibitors are exposed. They're going for the dragon. They'll get it. But King, they do not care at all. Straight for this one. Assassin, so much damage. Wushin, so much damage as well. They're going to be able to easily eat up these inhibitors. No trade to come through because all of these waves are pushing. True Shot Barrage finds the target. Not able to get another inhib but they get the middle one and the bottom one yet to respawn. Yeah, completely forced away a king, but they got what they came for. Able to grab an inhibitor. They didn't get all three, so it's still a wide open game. Bottom inhibitor now respawning, so only one down, and maybe in the favor of LGD because of the fact not able to get the second one. Fifth dragon now only six minutes away, and... What a late game coming through. Oh, and this is the closest game that we have seen in the LPL so far. 3,000 gold is the difference. 22 kills to 23. It's only really the towers that are pushing King further ahead in this game. And Farm, look at the ridiculous numbers coming through for Akon. Almost 150 CS in the lead over his lane opponent. But you look down, Wushin's 100 ahead. He has got so much damage, sold his boots, and built a Trinity Force. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I don't care about Acorn at this uh, point. He, Wushin's just running around in swords and shoes. This guy has got <laughs> complete style on the rift. He's picked up probably the most expensive build possible, and he's looking to get a lot of work done. I believe he even sold a Static Shiv to pick up that Phantom Dancer at the same time. So he's not going to be moving as quickly, but when you've got Righteous Glories on your team on the hunt available as well, you're not going to be too worried about that one. So he's going to be doing so much damage in these fights. And Trinity Force actually works quite well because you've got that auto attack reset in your Ricochet. So it does do a fair bit of work in these fights and does extra damage to these structures as we've got a minute and a half on this Baron and King are already in position because what else are they going to do? Let's be honest. Yeah, exactly right at this point. Not much else coming through. Wuxian actually has 430. 3 AD. So if you couple a crit on top of that uh, Sheen proc that's going to come through from the Trinity Force, people are going to start completely melting. Yeah, that might be just all of Wayless's health bar just in one auto attack. Elixir of Iron coming through. That's the biggest Lee Sin that I have ever seen. Death Sentence going to go slightly wide here. Lamb almost copping that one. And look at the wave clear to come through. These shurikens in the late game do so much damage. The boomerang blade is all that is necessary to clear out a wave of creeps. And this is my problem with Iron Elixir. I don't. Un I understand that the champion gets bigger, but how do their clothes still fit? Yeah, that's actually a smite to get rid of a Banshee's Veil there onto Acorn, as he's just going to bounce away, turning into a gigantic force. King still on the front foot, but they don't want to get flanked. They don't want to get caught out, like you mentioned, by that Lee Sin Kick, by that Dragon Rage, and they need to have control of the vision. Ooh, when looking to maybe go in here, decides against it. Needs to be careful he doesn't chase too Ooh, far. Yeah, exactly. The Sonic Wave is going to land onto Sky, but 
This is exactly where you want to be getting these equalizers. It's the point on the map where you want to be using that ultimate to really zone people away and get the fights that you want. And King turning it around yet again. They're sort of it's like the bait and switch to come through from these teams because King wants to wants them to fight where they need to. Yeah, I don't think anyone knows who is stronger at this point in the game. I think LGD think they are in the open and in the close spaces, Rumble is. Yep, and Sonic Wave to come through. It's not going to find its mark. Akon's turning huge and trying to get amongst this one. Has the flash. Can flash into that now if he wants to. Righteous Glory to come down as well just to get his team to safety. No ultimates has have been blown. Everyone's sort of very tentative on the trigger in this game. Yeah, that might actually be the Baron in favor for King right here because they were able to dance back and forward long enough that the mid lane super creeps have pushed in. They're on the inhibitor. Acorn has to go deal with them. Not much AD on this now, so may be able to pick this one up for free, although they're not starting it up. Yep, Acorn has, has actually head back and he has the teleport available. King, they're coming round. LGD have found their way in as well. They have the wards. The pink ward over the wall there as well. The teleport in from Acorn. They want to start something up. This Baron has done no damage to the side of King though. And Acorn now sort of stuck in this pit. True Shop Raj does a lot of damage to Assassin. He has that Guardian Angel though. And everyone wanting to start something. Sonic Wave actually resonating strike to come through from Schwen, but he's not taking any damage from this flame sweater. The dark finding to come through. Oh, that assault and battery on a Schwen. That is not the target they want. The equalizer in a decent position. Imp is just eating damage from that, and MLXG doing a lot of work. Imp is dead. Assassin manages to, manages to pick up Wayless as well, and PYL, the death sentence on the Sky King, are tearing through this fight, even though they only have two members alive. PYL and Acorn, they're so tanky, but the damage is in the favor of King. Yeah, in the end, it's a three for four. Assassin looking to see if he can finish this one off. Acorn probably a little bit too quick at this point, but a fantastic team fight on a knife's edge. It's ridiculous to see Assassin's Guardian Angel was procced and he knows that he can't let Akon go back to base. He's on such low health procs that Guardian Angel there as Sky's teleported into the base, able to clear out these inhibitors. Assassin, his damage is necessary as Akon has the ability to potentially finish him off. Assassin needs to hit some creeps to get some health back so that this Gigantic, nah, doesn't do too much work. Beautiful use of that living shadow. The Nexus, it is exposed here. Assassin goes down. Sky trying to finish off the Nexus. The wall up coming through from Acorn. Is he the hero for LGD? Sky trying to get the damage onto this one. Acorn doesn't quite have it here. And the Equalizer to come through clears out all the creeps. And Sky is going to be able to win the game for King. A 2-0 victory against LGD, and that was the closest match that we've ever seen. And probably the most apt finished ever. A Rumble versus a Nara in the end, walloping <laughs> on each other. Rumble just kills him with passive damage from the Equalizer, and what a game. King completely turning a series on his head. They should not have won this one. They had no business winning almost either of those games because LGD, they had the control early. They had 4-0 to zero in Dragons in the first game, 3-0 to zero in the second game. Managed to pick up that Baron as well in the, the one that we just witnessed. And man, I thought that Assassin was going to be irrelevant, but built that Guardian Angel and managed to just destroy Wayless. Yeah, used his auto attacks to really good effect in the last couple of fights, and I actually think we have a replay of one, so we'll jump straight in. This is in the bottom lane where Assassin looks like he's going to get caught out aggressively, death sentence, and then baits Wayless in. This is about 30 minutes before the end, but about 40 minutes through, and in the end, Wuxian on the back just goes completely berserk. All of that AoE coming through, gets the Penta stolen away from him by MLXG, but every single member of King performed above and beyond what we expected coming into this. I think big shout out to MLXG. He oh, really yeah. turned it on and Assassin went nuts. Assassin was incredibly impressive. Both games, solo killing Wayless there in the mid lane. And you don't see that often. Wayless is a fantastic player, but... I, I'm so tuckered out after that. I'm going to need pace time to come in for the next series. Speaking of which, we are going to go to a brief break, but we are going to be back with Snake taking on V.